Hello, Saturday, summer, favorite time of the year. This week has been a really, really awesome week uh, for me. Um, hitting all my weight loss goals. Because you know we got to get ready for summer, you know, have the, the summer buddy going on. It's not been easy. And people keep asking me, Joe, what are you doing to lose weight? That, that was kind of like my first I Rise conversations where we talked about um, intermittent fasting and the OMAD diet. So believe it or not, I ate an entire pizza yesterday. I do have cake and ice cream most days um, and still losing weight. So it's called the OMAD diet, if you, which means one meal a day, if you're curious as to how I am able to meet my goals. Okay. Hey, how you doing? My fellow Torontonian or GTAN, we're both in the GTA. You must be happy now that Ontario is finally opening up today. I still don't know what that means. Like they're saying opening up, like everything's going to be open, but we know everything's not going to be open. It's probably just a 15% type capacity on patios and outdoor gatherings and maximum of five people, that kind of stuff. But, you know, it kind of still feels good to be able to to get out of the house, especially now that um, the weather is nice and lovely. So tell me what's happening with you. But you're the only ones I'm just gonna pick on you. What's happening with you? Hey T. Uh, Tony, I did try to add you already, so I don't know if you got it. Can you see the invite to join? Hmm. I've sent it to you a couple of times, so it disappeared. Okay, um, I've sent it again. Oh, I think you have joined. Ha ha! The one and only yes boss. Wagwan J. You know how we do. We're just chilling. You're enjoying uh, mm -hmm. all the way in Abuja. <laughs> oh, you're back in Abuja. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I left South Africa on Tuesday. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, nice, mm -hmm. nice, nice. So I see a couple of people joining. Can you just like let us know where you're joining from today before we get started? Um, good to see you. Can you hear me? Okay, because I, you know, I think we're all good. Yeah? T? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, welcome, everyone, to I Rise Conversations with Joan. This is, okay, thanks from Nigeria. Um, so these are just open conversations that we have about everything that has to do with life. And the goal is how can we share knowledge and wisdom to help us be better on this journey of life? And today, so most of the topics are based on my book, I Rise. 10 Secrets to Getting Up When Life Knocks You Down. If you haven't got it, I'm mad at you. So go get it. It's available on Amazon and in Nigeria as well. So talking about wisdom and sharing wisdom, I do have with us today one of my closest friends, uh, Tony, and definitely a genius in many, <laughs> in many, many topics. Um, so I'm super excited to hear what Tony has to talk about today. And today's one of those like table shaking subjects that no one likes to talk about, but you know, it's right out there. So I'm super excited. So uh, before we get started, uh, Tony, maybe you could just quickly introduce yourself to us. Okay. Um... What's there to say now? My name is Tony Wakalo, first of all. Um, I am a Nigerian. I am a science enthusiast. My discipline is in uh, crop protection and environmental biology. It's actually a double discipline. Oh, wow. And um, I'm, a, I'm an environmentalist, and I'm a very passionate lover of nature, of sciences, Um my, I'm a creator. I like to create stuff. So yes, that's another part of me. I'm also a reader, an avid reader. So I read a lot. I like to know new things. I like to do new things. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm one of those never say never type people. I guess that's why I'm still in Nigeria and I'm trying to make sure <laughs> things work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Someone has to stay behind. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
so Tony's into many things. Like he's just, you know, like he's into everything, everything, any industry you can think about, Tony's in there or he's been in there uh, or he's going to get into it in the future. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so watch this space, honestly. Um, so Tony, today we're going to be talking about um, religion versus spirituality. And before we kind of delve in into, you know, what the world thinks about it, what about you? What's been your own personal journey with spirituality? Mm. So s- spirituality in itself, I think, is something that's very poorly understood, you know, because while I was growing up, you know, we go to church and we practice a lot of devotion, but it's devoid of any deep spiritual essence. When you come across literature of what an ex- an explicit and a spiritual experience is like, you see that the experience you've grown up and spent many years, because if anything you spend time doing, you should grow in that thing, okay? Mm-hmm. It should be better. But I mean, for those who wanted to be honest, like me, I knew that I wasn't getting exactly what it was that was being described. So it left me thirsty and the thirst led me to ask questions and because maybe by nature I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit I'm naturally very fearless so I was able to delve into realms that people would be scared to to ask questions and find out so spirituality for me has been an awakening of the true self who's the the higher man as it were and I spent a lot of time discovering who that individual is And it has been, for me, the most rewarding experience above every other thing I've done in my life. Wow. So, like, the spiritual awakening. (laughs) And we're going to talk more about the awakening and what that actually means. Um, So, yeah, so I hear you because that was pretty much my journey as well. And we found that we went to church, we did all this devotion, mass, and all this Holy Communion confession. But there was still something lacking. And, and I guess, like you said, most of us become very inquisitive. We're asking questions. And we know that a lot of religion says, don't ask questions. <laughs> you know, just believe. Just you, know, mm. you shall not take away from this book. This book is complete. Just believe. You know, just, and that's kind of like the, the indoctrination that we had. So most people were not able to question some of those things that most people are feeling. Because I want to believe that most people have that feeling inside of them that, that, that this can be it. Um, there's more to it than, than, than what we see in religion. Okay, so now we're using those two words, religion, spirituality. Um, a lot of religious people claim to be spiritual as well. Like the, you know, most people are like, no, but it's the same thing. What do you mean religion? Religious and spirituality are different. Most people can't differentiate the two. So are they different, one? Can you be one and not the other two? Or, and can you be both? Hmm. Okay, so it's like uh, when you talk about religion, religion is a set, is, is like a set of rules or doctrines which should aid you on a spiritual path. So religion, in, without abuse, should lead you on the path of spirituality because it's, it, it helps you understand the nature of self. That's what religion does. And from pe- people who have understood self, put down certain rules of do's and don'ts such that you can master growth and enlightenment, which leads you into spirituality. However, the the, uh, corruption of the mind, the corruption of, of emotions have corrupted devotion such that the true essence of it is lost. So it's like how the Bible says, the, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life, the letter of the word. So there's more of the letter of the word right now. You know, people just do things because it is what everyone is doing. The spirit of it is not there. And so can you be one and not be the other? Can you be spirit, spiritual without being religious? Oh, absolutely. It's like having um, a little kid would have, what's those two little wheels on the side of the bicycle, right? That's when mm-hmm, the, the trainer have, wheels, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, the trainer wheels, thank you. So those mm-hmm. trainer wheels are almost like uh, religious devotion. At a point, you don't need trainer wheels. Mm-hmm. You, become, you become the essence of higher self because you've practiced long enough. Yeah. Okay? So, but with religion, you don't grow out of it because there are some teachings that are not absolutely understood in context or have been misrepresented in scripture. I don't know if it's deliberate. I don't know, you know, but... 
I know that those teachings are, seem like a, a real bane to spiritual growth because rather than stimulate open growth and love, you love God out of fear. Mm. And anything born out of fear is, is almost like being a slave or being imprisoned Led by religion or culture. It's a terrible place to be. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so so based on your explanation, so it's possible for so the initial purpose of religion was really to set us on a spiritual path or journey, but a lot of it has been lost along the line. Um, so I know a lot of religious folks will be like, no, but that's not true. But we pray, you know, we fast, we do all these things, you know, it's working. Our prayers are answered. Um, oh. Sorry, I wanna I wanna just add something to what you just said. Now, when you say, you see, in science, why science is very interesting is because science says that you must be able to repeat something under the same conditions and mm -hmm. get the same result for it to be a theory. You cannot say that because you are praying and you are fasting. What if the man who doesn't pray and fast gets the same result? What if, did you try not praying and fasting and see if you didn't get the outcome? If you didn't try the other one, how can you say that the result came? Because these are the things that happen in religion. It's a very, it's, 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 it, it, it's very narrow-minded sometimes, especially in Africa. It doesn't allow for critical reasoning. You know, um, you have to be able to I mean, I'm going to use I'm going to use uh, uh, the Bible a lot because that's the Christians make up the most of our population, and I think the challenge with uh, religion is the Abrahamic religions, mm -hmm. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, the three children of uh, Abraham. So the Eastern traditions don't really have this challenge as much, like Tibetan Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Jainism. It's not, they didn't corrupt the teachings as much. Okay, it has been preserved. But you find out that the Semitic religions, which is the Abrahamic religions, became almost like when Jesus said that they are trading doves in the temple. Mm -hmm. mm, it, it has been commercialized. Yeah. So anything that has become commercialized, it becomes a tool for manipulation. So there are certain things that were taking out, certain books taking out, that would have liberated you the certain things that don't fit in the narrative mm -hmm. for a lot, a lot of people a lot of people don't even know the real name of jesus you listen to people like that if he's talking about just the name yeshua or yehushua yeah some people some people don't people even can't know take the it. Real name. Like, <laughs> that's that's you see see so so that's what it is if anything that makes you unable to bend would eventually break you wow anything that makes you unable to bend will eventually break you Wow, that's powerful. Wow, okay. <laughs> so, so why is that though? Why is there so much discomfort? You know, talking, of questioning and talking. I, I know it's conditioning, it's how we were raised, but the fear is real. Like, I kid you not, the fear is real. Like, you know, you spoke about Daddy Freeze and I remember when Daddy Freeze was, you know, doing his whole stop paying type two years ago. There was actually another man of God who came and said, he's going to be, Daddy Freeze, I curse you. You're going to die by December or whatever, maybe last year or whatever. And, and the guy's still alive. And I'm sure that pastor's church is still full. You know, so what is this fear? Why are we so fearful? Who is this God that is so, that we're so afraid of? So, um, the God of the Bible is a very oof, is a very difficult God to see as a loving God. Mm. He kills more than the devil in the Bible. God killed more than the devil. So if you are not if if you allow yourself to face truth without bias, like become a great filter, certain things won't add up, but then you become awakened. Nobody can save you. If I said nobody can save you, people will say no. People will attack you. Yeah. <laughs> and people will tell you things like, no, it's up, uh, it is appointed unto man to die once. After that is what? Judgment. Now, these teachings um, are not exactly correct because, you know, there are certain things that if these teachings were correct, it would be very difficult to explain. Example, a child is born and it gets 
crushed by a car at four years old. What is the child's offense? So that child will go to hell or will go to heaven. Mm-hmm. But let me give you a typical one that was very difficult for people to answer. It says two, two, a father was, he had a choice of sending two children to locations. He sent one to a location where he was born into poverty, robbery. In fact, everything that was wrong, that's the family he was born into. So his immediate influences were all very negative. Then another child was sent into the royal family where he had tutors in language, in math, in physics, in history, you know, the right diet. Now the other kid ended up well, obviously, because the environment was very productive. Mm-hmm. And the kid who was born into the home of a robber ended up dying of being getting shot in robbery. Now, you as a father, would you say you were fair? Were those two kids put on the same pedestal to start life? Were they, in your opinion? No. So, so how can you judge the two of them the same way? That's what Christianity is trying to tell us they're doing. So it doesn't make sense. No matter how they try to defend it, it can never make sense. The only thing that makes sense is what the Eastern traditions who have held on to truth have preserved, mm-hmm. which is the reincarnating personality. There's something called cause and effect. What we are is a soul that keeps generating causes. And each time we come into any life, we have come as a result of the causes we've generated and we have come to sort out the effects of those causes. Is that like the law of karma? It is the law of karma because okay. it's like the justice. There's balance. You can't, there's not, when you gen, if you generate a cause mentally, Mm-hmm. In the mental realm, it has to be balanced. It's like positive. Haven't you seen how nature does it? Positive, oh, yeah, balance, negative. Yeah. Yep, yep. It must be balanced. Yeah. So you cannot generate a cause with your spiritual energy and it's a negative cause and expect somebody else to bear the effect. It can't rest anywhere in the universe. It's magnetically tied to you. Hmm. So there's nobody you, being, be, being kind or being good or, or being, you're not helping anyone but yourself. Because your creative self is being put to work every second, whether you are aware or not. If you don't like your present, that's the state of mind. You are attracting the circumstances based on your perceptions of reality. They don't teach you these in church. You are waiting. You are always looking outward, right? Outward, yeah. For, yeah. for, for a God or for a Savior. Someone come help you, yet, yeah. Yet, the same Bible will tell you that the kingdom of God is within you. There's a it's lot of conflict you. in the... It's a lot of conflict in the teachings. Okay. Anything that empowers you on your inside is of spiritual, is spiritual in nature. Anything that is material, anything that is too carnal is, I don't, I don't want to use the word, but that's not what you should be looking at. Ask a Christian or a Muslim to describe heaven and what, what vehicle goes there, what <laughs> being goes there. They don't know how, they can't describe it. Out of every hundred Christians, maybe two, can describe what the heavenly experience would be. They know about pearly gates, okay? So you can describe, but what is going to the pearly gates? And who told you that the soul needs pearly gates? Who told, yeah. you, who told, you, who told you that the soul has a physical geometric has a physical, form? Exactly. Because even the Bible tells us that we're spirit, you know, having a physical experience. But people can't seem to fathom that. It's always like, no, 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 we're physical you know, who have a spirit or soul within us, you know, because once you're dead, like there's no physical body, what do you need mansions for? You know, there's no, there's no, like. So, so these are, the, this kind of thinking is not encouraged. Oh, no, church. it's not. How dare you? Blasphemy. So, <laughs> so this is why spirituality is completely different from religion. The spiritual man is not looking for anything on his outside. He's trying to practice meditation so he quietens the noise on the inside. Because there's so much noise on the inside that if you don't even quieten those voices, you, you can never have a quiet experience on your outside. Mm. You're going, you're, you're, you're lifting up holy hands. Holy in what way? To whom? Um, to, to whom? If there's a God that is a material, physical God, that's definitely not the God I'm going to serve. No. So, so what, what is on the outside, it, when you say that um, when a man becomes born again, you, he's become, yeah, all things have passed away and uh, all things become new. Mm-hmm. 
how does it become new? You say he has a new state of mind. How? His thoughts hasn't changed. The karma he's generating, his causes are still there. His experiences, his mind-body complex, his psychic abilities haven't changed. His desires haven't changed. His passions haven't changed. He went into a church, had a tearful experience for 20, 30 minutes. He walked out, the same individual. He doesn't change what he reads. He's still as impatient as he was. And then you say the man is born again. That the man will go to heaven before the man that is an atheist. How? If the man that's an atheist is kind, if he follows the universal laws of love, definitely you have a heavenly experience. So these are the things. Religion is the source of the world's intolerance. Where you call it Boko Haram, whether you call it Pente even within the Christian, you see that the Catholic won't agree with the Anglican. Anglican will not agree with Pentecostal. Why is there so much chaos? Why are we all fighting for God? Anything with so much chaos, it cannot be a, a, of God. They just don't want to calm down and look at the facts as it is before them. He's a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. Between Methodist, Baptist, Anglican, Catholics, the Orthodox churches, they still don't agree. Yeah, that's true. They will say some of them is Ekanka, that they follow the sound of, then they will say others are celestial church. What, the same God? It's important. It doesn't make any logical sense. And these are the things we see every day. Yeah, the school for, you know, everyone is cool with it. So I guess mm -hmm. when you become spiritual, you become, you say less. You just watch more. That's one of the signs. Because you always you always seem to be talking above people's heads. Yeah, they don't get it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> okay, a lot to process. And I'm sure people, some people are like, okay, I'm out of here. This is blasphemy. I don't want to burn in hell. <laughs> but, you know, you're speaking the truth, you know, and it is what it is. And, you know, I kind of agree with what you said. The more spiritual you become, the, the quieter you, you are. Because now you enjoy that quietness because you need to quieten it the inside and then you will see your life on the outside um start to transform you know and you threw some words you know like some people still a lot of christians would say to me but i meditate and when i say how i'm hearing things like uh, kabashin and i'm like hello that's really not meditation <laughs> but again the churches really don't teach people how to meditate they use the word all the time you meditate on my word day and night they, they say such things but I don't think that they truly teach people how to meditate. Um, so I don't know. What, what, what is meditation to you? And can you just explain it in like two minutes? So meditation is keeping the, well, attempting to keep the mind absolutely quiet. You see the originals, there's so much that you need to understand about self to even understand meditation, okay? So if you follow the Eastern traditions, which have held on to the truth. They describe the, the being as having various vehicles of consciousness. So there's a physical vehicle of consciousness, which is what I can see on this video. I can see a physical drawn. But above that, when you go to sleep, you're not dead. What's happening? You've gone to the higher, higher realm, which is the astral vehicle of consciousness. How would you hear the bony people say uh, astral projection? Mm -hmm. You haven't heard this? <laughs> yes, what, is, what, does, what does astral mean? Astral means starry. That's what astral means. You are going to the starry realm. Astral mm -hmm. projection. Project, which means you are seated in one place, but you project self. Yeah. That's what you are. When you go to sleep, consciousness would leave the physical vehicle and go up to the higher vehicle of consciousness. The reason you don't know how to use it is because you haven't been practicing how to use it. What, who's, when you say someone is clairvoyant, what does that mean? It means the person can see higher realms can see higher vehicles of consciousness. They can see you in colors. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, they called this witchcraft. I'm sure you in Canada, and you have people, you know about clairvoyance, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing, okay? The meditation is keeping the emotions and thoughts out of the way. Now, because whatever you think, right and whatever you feel you identify with it so it distorts the higher self the higher self sends intuitive information to the lower self mm -hmm. but the lower self is like if you don't keep it's like a pond if you don't keep the pond still 
you can't see to the bottom. It cannot reflect. So when you're thinking and, and, and feeling too many things, you cannot reflect your higher self on the inside. So what meditation does is it slows down that process where you are observing what you think about, you are observing what you are feeling as an independent entity. You are listening to yourself think and you are listening to yourself feel. After a while of thinking nothing is happening, you begin to separate yourself from your thoughts and your emotions. After a while, the thoughts and emotions identify that you know that they are separate from you. Mm -hmm. and then their power begins to weaken. It's like that which you expose loses its strength over you. Mm. So that's what meditation should lead you to if you're doing it right. So separation from your, the human mind or the human brain, which keeps talking and talking and never keeps quiet. The, the, the human brain doesn't really talk. The human brain the mind. tries to... Yeah. Yes, so the mind, the mm -hmm. mind is purely information. The brain only tries to interpret what the impressions is getting from the mind mm -hmm. is using your physical experiences, using memory, using everything to interpret what is getting as an impression or as an emotion. Yes, that's what it is. Okay. So, <sighs> Tony, you're killing me, let alone other people. So, um, meditation, quieting of the mind, you know, trying to reconnect to your inner self, your inner, man, your higher man to get into that next level of of consciousness or a different realm and start to separate yourself from your thoughts and your, your, your thinking mind. And then over time you start to disempower that and there's, you there's, gain there's, full there's control. Two, there's two minds. There's the higher mind and there's the lower mind. Okay. The higher mind is called the intuitive mind. That's the knowing mind. Mm. When you become a master like Jesus, like all of the great prophets, they don't depend on the lower mind. They depend on the higher mind because it doesn't need to learn. It's a knowing mind. No, yeah. That's what intuition is. That's why you hear someone say in the Bible, Jesus was the one who knew me. He almost, they know everything because that's the universal mind. Hmm. The, so, the personal mind is the yeah. lower mind. Okay. Yes. So, so that's this, the high, this higher mind, is it available to everyone is, is this something that you're born with it's there whether you tap into it or not it's there and you can you know it's it's, it's pretty interesting you said are you born with it you know why <laughs> because that's exactly what it is why don't you why do you think the, when jesus was talking about who will make heaven he said you must be like one of the little ones why correct mm -hmm. you know why because when you're born as a little child you come with the consciousness of the universe that's why the baby does not know the difference between up and down when he's trying to touch, a baby trying to touch your head will put it at the leg. The eye hasn't, it hasn't, it hasn't kicked in yet. It hasn't started to believe the lies of the world. It's still pure. It doesn't have fear. If they're arm robbers now or whatever it is, the baby doesn't feel it as fear like you will feel it. It might feel mm -hmm. the energies and cry, but it's not afraid of any mental construct of fear because it has none. It has, it has no, memory hasn't started working. Memory and imagination are the two slave drivers. They are the two that keep you away from being present. One takes you to the past, the other one takes you to the future. So you never enjoy now. Hmm. Being present. Uh, yeah. I, I hear that a lot. And people are like, oh, no, but I'm present. Um, what does being present mean? You know, like, Ikatoli is like all about the now. Well, what does it mean? Because I've heard it a lot. I know what it means, but maybe you can explain to people who may not be aware of what being present. Because they're like, no, but I'm here now. I, I'm, what do you mean I'm not present? What does it really mean to be present? What it means to be present is to examine yourself and be aware of the moment. Because a lot of the time, when you let self go, you know, it's just like uh, when, you, when you look at the, the mind, the subconscious and the conscious mind, right? You see that a lot of the activity of the mind-body complex is placed in the subconscious, 95% of it. So when you say you are present, it means that you are using the conscious mind. When you are absent, you have drifted into the subconscious. You can be driving. Haven't you noticed that sometimes you're driving and you don't even know what road you're on because you're thinking about the problem, correct? Yeah. But you didn't crash the car. Why? You weren't present there. You were, you were able to drive that car I mean, I'm telling you, they, maybe they fired you in the job or you lost the contract. You're <laughs> yeah. pissed off. You get into the car. Your mind is on that thing, yet you don't 
you don't beat the traffic lights. Yeah. So there's two minds working there. One mind is actively dealing with that problem as you are driving, and the other mind is driving the car. That's why you didn't crash it. And they're separate. That's why you could do both at the same time. So what I'm trying to say is being present is being in the conscious mind, not in the subconscious. Once you drift into the subconscious, there's only two things that are work there, your imagination or your memory. So the memory is thinking about things that from, from the past and the imagination is, you know, continuing things in front the future. That haven't, yes, that haven't happened. So you will never enjoy now. Because each, each, each memory is, has an attached emotion to it. So, for example, if you spend a lot of time thinking about how negative things always happen to you, you would always drift into negative memories because there's a deeper level to emotions. Your body that you think is yours is not really yours. It's an independent entity. And your body, if you start to feed your body with, uh, what's the hormone for stress now? What's that stress? Cortisol. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you start to feed the body cortisol, right? And that's because you're always thinking things that stress you out. The biochemical activity in your body, your body gets high on cortisol. If you want to start to be happy and give your body the epinephrines, like dopamine, mm -hmm. the body doesn't know that high. It likes the cortisol high. Yeah. And it realizes that these are the kinds of thoughts that, and emotions that bring that high. It will continue to push them to you. Is it not amazing that your body can do that without your permission? Wow. Yes, that's, how, that's why awareness must identify. I, I tell people, I said, well, they, I, everyone listening to me now, even you, Joe, and you're hearing voices in your head. It's not just one. Oh, yeah, <laughs> many voices. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what it is. Wow. Okay. So even your body can control your life without you, let alone or your mind. Okay, so I want to touch on something else that you, you kind of briefly touched on. You're saying that, you know, the more, if you're always thinking negative thoughts, you attract those kind of situations to yourself. So I think that's, you know, what people like Bob Cox talk about. Your, your thoughts become things. Your, 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 your thoughts, you know, your thoughts determine who you become. You're creating your universe and your world. Some people don't like the word universe. They're like, hey, what's universe? It's different from God. But your, <laughs> <laughs> your thoughts are creating your reality and creating your future. So, so how does that really play out? So, you know, you've already talked about higher mind, lower mind, consciousness, being present. Like, how do you create, how can we have a better life? <laughs> okay, so, so this is what it is. You have to understand the fundamental nature of reality first to understand what I'm saying. So I always give this, this as, a, as the basis of understanding some of these deeper esoteric or spiritual teachings. At the foundation of everything that we call reality is mathematics. It's crazy, but the universe has no time for personal relationship with everybody. It uses codes. It uses math very delicately. So you see that they will have delicate calculations for the distance of the earth to the sun. They will have delicate calculations for the space between your, your, your face, your eyes right here and your nose. And it doesn't change. So the universe has set certain things in codes, like nitrogen cycle, like carbon cycle, like the number of, it's repeated, cycles. Mm -hmm. So the universe operates in cycles. If you understand the cycles, you will know how to manipulate those cycles. That's what the ancients understood. They understood the cycles. But we've lost that ability to study, observe those cycles. Well, maybe NASA is doing that right now, because NASA is the one that's giving everybody fake news everywhere <laughs> on what really is going on. But yeah, we've lost that we're not connecting with the um, higher realms anymore. We are being, we are being weakened, as it were. So um, when you look at what we are actually learning, when you look at what we are actually doing, we do not understand what self is. We do not know what higher self is. We do not know what the reincarnating ego is. We don't know why the reincarnating ego doesn't change. I'll give you a scripture. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, but you're not seated in any heavenly place. How are you seated? But if you understood it in the context of the soul, the soul cannot come down. The soul only is like an umbilical cord. It, 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 it comes down through energy and takes on a, a form. This is a separate teaching. If you're if you if you not taught this, you won't understand what you are. So a lot of people think when they die, I mean, the Catholics 
try to hide it in something they call purgatory. Mm -hmm. That's why purgatory is your astral experience after after you you leave the physical body. You know, a lot of people don't understand it. They think that you just die now, as you just die, you just go to white throne. You see one angel that opens one big book. <laughs> I mean, it's it's it's, 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 incre it's, it's, it's it's incredible, right? It's incredible how many people think this is what reality is. Like the angel would, would, would open the book and search for your name. And then if you have been a good person to your give video. your life. Remember, they have to play your video. They play the video <laughs> of your life. <laughs> we're, la we're laughing, okay. but this, these are doctrines and dogmas that we believe for a very, very long time. And, and again, it's still very yucky to certain people. They're like, I can't talk about this. I'm not going to get into this kind of conversation because they're just they're afraid. They're scared. Yeah. They're scared. That's what, that's what, that's what the church has done. It's, it wasn't now. They've been doing it since the Crusaders, right? Yeah, who, who killed They've a been, lot of people. They, they yeah, killed the a church, lot of people. Trying the church to protect, killed the, church, the, ki the yeah. secrets. Yeah. yeah. They didn't want the truth to come out. But you see, Africans especially don't read. That's why we have a challenge. If you read, you would understand things in context. We have been fighting and killing for this God for so long. That era will soon pass. Because the truth will come out. That's why we're talking about it. At a point in the 80s, this is not even a conversation that we could have. Oh, now we have, yeah. we, have, we, have, we, have, we have had experiences where now we can talk freely about these things. And those who have the answers can come forth and answer us. There's going to be rapture very well. If you watch all the movies like Left Behind, you see that what the rapture is that you will take the physical body and you'll be caught up in the clouds. As what? The physics doesn't support it. God is not a God of chaos. Go and, work, go and study quantum mechanics. You are going to be caught up as an electromagnetic energy. Who told you that the electromagnetic energy will have the form of a human? Who told you that you will not reduce to the size of a marble? Mm -hmm. You don't know. Who told you that in your real, your higher vehicle of consciousness is not an egg? Who told you? They don't ask any questions. So at the end of the day, when people say, oh, we can't, we're scared, it's blasphemy, it's okay. They always say that at the end of the day, what you will not learn with in peace, <laughs> you will learn in violence. <laughs> oh, mm. yeah? Wow. Life will, life will teach you itself. Life will teach you. Hmm. Okay. So, like, I know that. I remember when The Matrix came out uh, and I used The Matrix as you posted something about it a couple of days ago. Um, and a lot of gurus also refer to The Matrix uh, as a way for creative people to try to help people learn this stuff and know that, but most people just watch The Matrix like a movie and they were entertained, Neo, you know, <laughs> meant nothing to them and whatever. Um, but I know that The Matrix, having watched it again since I started on my own journey, has a deeper meaning. You know, and it almost, and, and even some people will say things as far fetched as we're in a simulated game. We're just, like, we're, like, we're just, we're in a game. <laughs> we're in a matrix. <laughs> Are we in a matrix? So, yeah, this, this question you've asked, you are, you are going to have to, first of all, understand that your physical realm, which is the physical universe, the Mars, Earth, has six representative six other versions of it just like oh, wow. we have four other versions so there's i have to give you the names so there's the atmic self which is the highest self then there's the buddhic self which is the universal soul then there's the manasic self which is mind then there's the emotional self before the physical self making five correct now a lot of people identify and know only the lowest vehicle of consciousness so they're not building the higher vehicles of consciousness in the physical body because they're not even aware that those are vehicles of consciousness. They're not aware that mind is a realm in itself. A mind in itself is pure. It's without any emotion. There's nothing like a bad thought. The universe doesn't produce evil. There's only moral evil from the heart of a man. You consider something as evil because you see in part, you don't see the whole. You see the effect, but you don't see the cause. Mm. So, in essence, you cannot understand these things if you do not understand the realms. If you do not understand the journey of the human soul, 
from from involuting, which is incarnating us uh, into flesh, and then learning in the physical body and going back on an upward journey to sort out that which it has learned as a soul. And come back again. <laughs> Learn something that's else. why it's called that's why it's called evolution you are evolving to take more and more of your higher self and let it control the lower self we are evolving upwards there's nothing like forever eternal da damnation or weeping and gnashing of teeth those are all false doctrines <laughs> There's no, no father. Would, no, oh my God! No, 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 no father, no father would do that. That's those are those are doctrines born out of fear. There's no physical God you are going to see in any heaven. Heaven is a construct of your mind, because mind is a realm. But they didn't teach you what it's called. It's called Devachan. And that's why even the Apostle Paul said the third heaven. Why was he talking about a third heaven? Because he understood that there were subplanes within a plane. There's heaven one, two, and three, and that's in the Bible. But nobody can teach on it because that teaching is not promoted mm -hmm. in the Christian doctrine. It's just for that scripture. And in the third heaven, he saw X, but it's never talked about further. Wow. Jackie's saying, what we assume to be the subconscious realm is actually a higher form of consciousness. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Tony, I don't know how you know all this. Well, you're a genius anyway, so you know these things and you love to read. And, you know, it just shows that we don't know anything. <laughs> like, even, like, I've been on this journey now for almost three years, and I still feel like I don't know anything. And that's why it's a journey. You just keep learning and building as you grow. And our people, we don't like to read. And that's why people go to men of God who can help them read the Bible for them. And just, just tell me what it says I should do. You know, so I think that's one way that we can really start to I'm going to use the word awaken, and maybe you can explain what awaken is. To awaken, you know, become more curious, you know, read, learn, like see what science is doing. Like science has proven a lot of the things that you're saying, you're discussing here today, you know. So, so how else can people start the awakening without it sounding scary? Awakening. So, so um, these things are not... I have to use another scripture because the Bible is actually a book that it's actually a book that a lot of people don't understand. It's a code, it's a code of life's lesson. The Bible says it is not of him who willeth, nor of him who runneth, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. You cannot uh, awaken by yourself. Every soul has an age. Those that hear us and can accept what we are saying, even though they've never heard it before at different ages than those that hear us and say, oh, what are they saying? It's blasphemy. <laughs> They're younger souls. Our job is not to, to be upset by that. I gave a friend a, a, a typical example. It's like you and I now, right? We start to take a, a calculus, integration and differentiation to grade schoolers. And then we are angry that they don't grab the concept. It's not for that age. It's not for that age. The fact that you and I can do solve complex calculus problems, we should not assume that those in grade school have the mental capacity or have passed through the different math classes to get to the point where we can handle calculus so easily. The same thing. I don't expect everyone to take what we're saying. Some people will say, this one has a talking nonsense. This one has eating. It's okay. <laughs> Even Jesus himself, how many people believed him? Yeah. yeah. So it should, it should tell you that those who speak truth never have, there are not many. In fact, when I look at the number of people that go for Shiloh and Redeem Camp, I should be worried. Because the road is narrow. That's not narrow. That's everywhere. <laughs> truth, truth. Without fear, it's not narrow. So what is my point? My point is, we are, we, for you to become awakened, you have to first of all deal with fear. You have to face your own fear. You must not be afraid of the number one thing which they used to scare you. You must confront yeah. it, which is the fact that... <laughs> thank you. I knew you were going to hit it. Hell. Once, once you have overcome the fear of hellfire, you are awakened. You, but you must go there first, mentally. For you to overcome it, you must go there. That's why they say uh, religion for, is for people who are afraid to go to hell. And spirituality is for those who've already been there. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah, because if you are not afraid of hell, there's nothing they have on you. That's the worst. Yes, I will go. They'll be weeping and national. Okay, yes, I agree. <laughs> yes, now is that not it? That I will be eternal there. Yes. And then I will challenge the people there. How, what is my sin? Let me sin pass. Because all the men of God said that they do business with the church. Yes, they are doing it for money. Let's not kid ourselves. We who have worked in church, we've seen the kind of sex romps between Sister Mark and Sister and Brother Philip. Yes, it's the truth that they don't say outside. Church is very polluted. I can't speak for the Muslims because I don't know. It's the one I know. But I have even worked in a church too. And I know that there's plenty. So if, he's, so if he God is so holy like that, he's watching us do all these things in his house. Really? That same God that you are fighting for as Boko Haram and as a Knight of Templar. No, it's not. The, we're all confused. And that's why, can't you see how backward Nigeria is, as religious as it is? Yet you cannot ask questions. There are churches everywhere. Everywhere, every they're, they're always, they are always, they are always catching one pot somewhere or the other. Pot, the pot that is taking my destiny. Who told you there's any <laughs> pot? No pot. Village people. No pot. So, so all of. But guess what, though? Guess what? They are creating those things because they are giving it their spiritual and mental energy for something that ordinarily didn't exist. And no one is helping them understand that they are killing themselves. How can you be talking about pots, talking about uh, every spiritual umbrella? Which is spiritual umbrella? Do you understand what even goes on? In Maybe they need to start to talk to Freemasons. Mm -hmm. People who actually know the truth. You know, all these men in the lodges, they must look at all these religious people as jokers when we go to... Because they've seen the truth. They've journeyed to those realms. They've traveled there. They know what's there. And they laugh. That you. It's only when you die that you will see the truth. There's two deaths. There's a death of the physical body, then there's a separation of the mental body from the emotional body. Before you come back again. There's two. How many people even know about the second one? Very few. How do you teach people this kind of thing when they don't even know their vehicles of consciousness? You say reincarnation, God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, it used to be it used to be in the Christian doctrine till sometime after Constantinople. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they took it, they out. took it out. The Christians don't need I mean, this is the thinking about why the Christians took it out. When, if you tell everybody that you're going to reincarnate and come back, right, the person will say, okay, no need to be holy in this life. Exactly. <laughs> don't worry. When I come, uh, when I yeah, come so, so don't worry. The one that I cannot learn now, when I come back the next time, I'll learn it. <laughs> Try again. So that would, be, that would be a world of chaos. They needed some level of mind control. Yeah. This is create it. You only get one life, one chance. That Don't way you hell. can subdue the people. <laughs> yes, exactly. <sighs> wow. Okay. So people cannot, people have to awaken on their own. So you're saying that, you know, people who are more spiritually advanced, you know, cannot try to help other people awaken. Like it has to come from within themselves. So, so what, yes, yes, you're saying what I'm saying, but in two different ways. What we're doing now mm -hmm. is the best that you can do to help anyone. Mm -hmm. But you, see, you know that popular saying is that you can take the camel or the horse to the stream. So the stream, you can force it to drink, yeah. That's what I'm, I'm talking about, the drinking. Because mm -hmm. without drinking, there's no awakening. It's not taking it to the stream, like what we're doing. It has to drink so that out of his belly shall flow what rivers of living water. There are words that you will speak that are truth that will resonate with the vehicles of consciousness of a being that doesn't even know he has that vehicle. His, that vehicle will resonate with the truth you speak because it is truth. And he will just have sensations like, I just like that guy. I like what mm -hmm. he's saying. No, mm -hmm. there's something inside of you like, mm -hmm. that is testifying. The Christians call it that the Holy Spirit will testify inside of you. That's how they, it's the same thing. So at the end of the day, we all are more than what we know we are. And that's why we are struggling to figure out why things ain't moving the way they should. Okay.
Okay, lots and lots to think about, uh, you know, and I know you've only just barely touched on some of these concepts because spirituality is very deep and it's very broad. And, you know, it might be, it might go over people's heads and some people might be like, oh my God, this is blasphemy. I don't want to listen to this and all that. But for, for people who are already on that journey or people who already have that stirring within them, you know, where they're like, I want more. I, I think, yeah, I'm ready. I, I want to go there you know, they've decided on their own that they want to go there. Are there things that you do to help other people? Do you teach classes? What can they do? How can yeah, yeah, so, because again, look so, at, think about, we're thinking about most people mostly in Nigeria where these kind of things, you dare not come out and hold a public uh, seminar. I don't know. So how can those people get so, help? So, mm -hmm. so, so for me, uh, I teach classes because you know, I'll use another scripture again. It says, and this is the, the scripture in the book of Timothy, chapter 2, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you do not study, you cannot access the realm of mind. And that is why study still remains one of the most uh, important exercises to build higher consciousness. If you are watching TV, your mind can wander. But when you are reading, haven't you noticed that once your mind wanders, you stay on one line? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't move. Yeah. Hmm. So you need to study. It traps the mind in higher mental activity, especially if what you're reading are spiritual things. It will exhaust the brain, but it will weaken its influences after a while. That's why it's called a spiritual exercise. So study is number one. The second thing you must learn to do is meditation. Most people get discouraged when they're meditating because they find it very difficult to keep quiet in their minds. So they're like, what's this? There's no difference between me watching TV and doing this. Please stay at it. Because the mind remains quiet. It's like a wild horse that needs to be tamed. So when you wake up in the morning and you want to meditate at those quiet hours, forget anything that the mind is saying. Pretend like it's not a part of you and that you're listening to. You know, have you ever seen the, uh, Joe, let me give you this example. You know, in school, right, in schools in Nigeria where the, the, everyone's making noise in the class and then that strict teacher just walks in. Do you see how everywhere gets silent? Yeah. <laughs> That's how the mind is. When the higher self walks in the room, hmm. it's like that teacher. The whole place is quiet. Now that's who you really are. That's who I really am. But if it's those kind of teachers that say, excuse me, I'm here to... Uh, yeah, well, they'll, be mass, they'll be <laughs> mass your air. So that's what's happening with a lot of people. Mm. When you meditate, you learn to be, to quieten those noises. And they, they don't notice you watching them till you start to watch them often. Which means they're making noise and you're there, but you're quiet in your head. Tomorrow you do it again, they make at a point they start to keep quiet. They start to notice you all those voices one after the other. That you're no longer lost in their noise. Mm. You're listening to yourself, your lower self, the things it likes, the things it desires, the things it wants to do with its day, the things it wants to do with its time, the emotions that makes it tick. You are not listening to it. It's a shame doing your listening. Sorry, it's a bit it sounds a bit weird, but that's <laughs> how weird that's how weird our being is. Hmm. Hmm. So learn, read, read, so study, much material. study, meditation, and meditate. There's a third one, service. Okay. Mm -hmm. You must stop all those Instagram giving. Give away? No, the one that you give and people must see. You <laughs> must stop it. That's what it is. It, 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 that, it takes away the power of everything, give you every giving. Once the, you say, the Bible says, when the right hand gives, the left hand shouldn't even know. It didn't yeah. even say your brother or your mother. It says, within your body, the right will give, the left wouldn't know. Here, what we do is we go and serve. For example, you want to work with uh, the blind. You are taking pictures on Instagram to show every little thing you're Camera doing. Camera crew, you're calling the press. <laughs> so, 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 you need to. Carry out service, but service without the cameras. Service without telling anyone what you're doing. You have to be as anonymous as possible in every good service. When I say as anonymous, if you give to church, you must never let them know who gave. 
Never ever. Once they start to say you should come and sit in front, you are just <laughs> a far, you are a, you are a Pharisee. So yes, these okay. are the three things. So study, medicine, service, and service. It's called the SMS principle. Oh, SMS. That's easy to remember. SMS. Mm -hmm. Love it. Wow. Oh my, I can't even believe it's almost an hour already. Like, Tony, we could just go on forever and ever. This was super amazing. Like, I've learned so much, and I hope people have learned so much as well. And I hope that people are not like, hey, God forbid, blasphemy, burning hell. You know, because the, the whole point of this really is just like you said, we're just trying to make people aware. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. If it's not your time to be awakened, then it's not your time to be awakened. You know, but we thank God for a time like this where we can actually have these sort of conversations and help people who might already be wondering or thinking about, you know, what is this whole spirituality all about and how can I get started? So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I really... My, my uh, pleasure. Your, your, your I, hope, <laughs> I, hope, I hope someday, right, we as Nigerians can realize that true liberation actually comes from less religion. Our maker wants us to be like children who learn about self. You know, the child will pick up a toy. He will, you know, piece it apart. But that's what science even encourages. Learn about life. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Religious dogma, religious doctrine is becoming obsolete. The fact that you have burning questions in your heart tells you that your being is struggling to be free from mental shackles. Once you feel that urge to like express a deeper sense of self, I'm not saying to manifest, express, express, which means you want to love. You don't want to be judgmental anymore. You don't want to do those things anymore. Once that begins to happen, trust me, it means it's time for you to get out of the bus because that bus is taking people nowhere. <laughs> Wow. Our boss in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. The people who taught us the religion, I must add, they're not doing it like us. Italy, Europe, True. China. Where's the church in China? Where we, they are feeding us. They own the whole of Africa. What kind of God are they serving that's superior to our own God? Because it's the God that, the God of the Bible says that, he says that we shall take territories. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, the Chinese people are blowing up churches. Yeah, they own <laughs> Africa. Something yeah. is wrong. So it means their own God is the God of the, the real God. And then our own God is a fake God. Because the God is watching us die, continuously become impoverished, and it's not helping us. And we are still praying and being more and more enslaved, ceding our territory to, to Chinese, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Nigeria, billions in debt. That is the f enslave a man, just give him a loan. He cannot talk again. Once he has not paid, he'll be dodging. He can't look at your eyes. That's what they are doing to us. But let me leave it at that for the church goers to look at the situation. <laughs> okay. Someone is asking how you can be reached. How can they reach you? <laughs> how I can be reached? That's my handle there. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not a. Tony Waka. I'm He's a, not, not hiding. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not a hiding person. <laughs> Thank oh, you for the someone opportunity. Someone says black holes are not innately good people. I, I don't know if that. I think we're all created pure. I think our, you know, our soul is is pure. I, I think it's you said. You said, you said. You said black souls are not what? Black folks are not innately good people. Okay, so you see, we are closer to the early man than the Europeans. That's why. If John, did your did your, did your grandfather go to school? Yeah, he did actually. Good, but did his father go to school? Probably not. Good, so you are two generations from the bush. Civility <laughs> takes time. Civility takes time. That's why the early man fights. Don't you see how the early man resolves dispute? Jungle justice. Jungle, yeah. You go to most of yeah. It's when you go to Europe, all those countries, you see them in there. Like, sir, can you step aside, sir? It's yeah. Civility. <laughs> they were not always yeah. like that, by the way. You know. Mm. They have to go through their evolution, their own processes. So Africa will go through its own. But right now, there are not too many civil people because most of us are not educated. You know, all this morality. We still have all those cultures where twin, witchcraft in Akwai Bomb, where you say the girl is born a witch. You know, yeah. we are still far, we are far from it. So let's just embrace what we are.
I make the best of it. Mm. Okay, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, there's too much lip service. Search for yourselves, you mouth. <laughs> we're getting there. We're, we're close to the jungle. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tony. This has been super, super amazing. If you need to reach out to Tony, his handle is uh, Tony Wakalo. You know, like he said, he's teaching people more about spirituality in Nigeria. So connect with him if you really want to get on this journey and help yourself and get to that higher level of consciousness where you're, you're one, you're what in one accord, you're your inner man, your true self. You really know who self is. And that way, life becomes amazing because you know that this is just an experience and you can create whatever it is that you want and stop re recreating the negative things and the voices in your head uh, making your life chaos and then you go to the church and you pray some more and you attract more bad things and all <laughs> crazy world honestly crazy thank you so much tony i don't know if you have any final words for people before we go just one word liberate yourself please it's not, we're not, you're not, there's no heaven outside of what's in your mind. There's no hell outside of what's in your mind. Heaven is not a physical place, neither is hell. That's why people who are suffering from depression and paranoia, that's hell. That's hell. Haven't you heard where people say the mental prison is the worst? So liberate your mind. Liberate your mind. And I close with saying it again. Liberate, Liberate your, your mind. mind. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you had an amazing time. I sure did. I sure learned a lot. Thank you so much, T. Um, and for everyone else, I will see you same time again next weekend. All right. Bye-bye, folks. All right. Have a great weekend.